So basically we have rotated, cropped, and run a background extraction. And these three images now are ready to combine into the Hubble palette. And real quick, I've got a bunch of tools over here. You see them all piled up. To me, these are the heavy hitters. These are the ones that I use the most. Um, and the screen transfer function, I just want to explain to you what that is. And, and of course, you can find it up here in processes, all processes, S's, right? Screen transfer function right here. When you're bringing in your tools and you're bringing in, you know, some of these things for the very first time, this is the one you want to have because what this basically does, if I open up my HA data and I hit F12, and I'm sorry, Mac users, uh, I don't know what the alternative is to F12. Hopefully somebody can answer that for me. But F12 will actually kill this stretch preview and let us know that this is linear data. It has not been stretched. And what this screen transfer function does, this little nuclear button here, basically gives us a preview of what it would look like if we decided to stretch it to these parameters. That's all it does. The data is not stretched. So I can go back and forth. And so I have a project made that has all these tools, the screen transfer function, the settings within these tools, I saved off as a project. So if you go over here to file, you can go save project and you can load that project and all these come populating in here with the settings that I have makes it another uh, time saver. So next step, we want to combine these and the tool that I use is channel combination. So let's open it up. Let's, uh, zoom in on it here we're going to reset it right and so we're going to set this data in here according to the hubble palette and what is the hubble palette it means from the reddest data to the bluest so the reddest is actually sulfur so let's grab that automatic background sulfur that we've been working on we're going to drop it into the red here okay we're going to take our next reddest data the ha we're going to put it in the green we're going to take the o3 drop it in the blue. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say apply global, minimize the tool. Let's take these guys and just kind of move down here. All right, so now we got an image, it's nice and black, cool. So let's, uh, let's stretch it. And I wanna show you something here, let me zoom in here. The screen transfer function comes default with the channels linked. See that right there? Meaning when we hit this stretch, all the channels are gonna uh, move in the same amount. Let's zoom back out. So let's hit that and see what we get. Ugh. So we get, you know, and this is one of the things when you're doing this, this is, you see something like this and you go run it back to Photoshop or something that you're comfortable with because you're like, what in the heck? This isn't what I wanted. So let's unlink those uh, channels and let's let Pix Insight what the proper stretch is going to be. So I reclick it and now that's starting to look a little closer to our end result, all right? We've got some cyan aqua where our uh, oxygen was dominant. You know, we're starting to see some yellow and where the hydrogen and sulfur are dominant. Um, but guess what? This is still linear data. It hasn't been stretched. Let's hit it again. And we want to make this data non-linear means we want to stretch it and the tool that we're going to use to accompany the automatic screen transfer is the histogram transformation tool once again alphabetized <laughs> uh, so here's something that is very very non-intuitive when it comes to pixel sight um, the screen transfer function is basically applying data it's got data once again in this little instance right here so we zoom in the little green triangle. So this stretch and everything about this stretch is all stored on this little information tab. See, it says new instance. So we want to tell, we want to give that information to the histogram transformation tool. So we drag it up here and we put it in the little receptacle that says, put it here. I don't see it. It's not here. So guess what? You just drop it right here on this little band and nothing happens. Great, but we wanna kill the auto stretch with F12. And we're gonna take that same data and we're gonna drag it over here and drop it onto the image and we're stretched. 
let's minimize the tool. So we know we're stretched. If we hit F12, it goes completely white. It means it's like it's stretched twice. So we've got our image uh, stretched here. It's in the nonlinear state. And if you notice with SHO, another thing that pops up that was totally uh, news to me is how much magenta. And that's actually, this image doesn't have a lot, but you can see it. Hopefully you can see it like around these stars here. You see all this magenta and, and I don't like it, especially it's in the background and sometimes it's really bad. You'll have these magenta halos around your stars. So I want to get rid of that. And like anything else in Pix Insight, there's oodles of ways to do stuff. Um, there's very manual ways, there's scripts. And uh, if you don't know, processes are tools. Scripts are combinations of tools to do a process. I hope that made sense. Um, but I wanna get rid of this magenta. And I'm gonna show you the way that I do. It's kind of middle of the road way. I'm gonna come up here to image and I'm gonna come down to the zoom in here, invert. And what that's going to do is create almost like a negative of the image. But guess what? Everywhere it was magenta, it's now green. And we got a tool for getting rid of green. And it's this tool right here called SCNR. Comes standard, color to remove, green, right? Let's leave it at 100%. And we're just going to drag that instance over, drop it onto the image. Takes seconds, does its thing. You see all the green is gone. Let's minimize it. We're going to come back over here to image, come down to invert. And now we got a much better looking image. See all that magenta, all the halo around the stars is gone. And to me, that's pretty freaking cool. If you don't think this is cool, something's wrong with you. <laughs> that uh, is so clever. I never thought about it. That's so clever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and sometimes wow. you have to run it a couple times, but with this image, it's just the once. So awesome. So we got a really great image here, and I want to do the next step is to apply color masks to this image because I want to work on the different colors within this image. Um, and but guess what? I've got some really good looking stars. Yeah, I've got good star color. I mean, for narrow band, you're not going to get true star color, but you know, I've got decent stars. There's no big halos around them. They're not blown up. And so I don't want to mess with those stars when I'm stretching my color data, right? So I want to remove them. And now within PixInsight, there is a tool called StarNet++. Um, zoom in here again. If you don't have this in PixInsight, get it. Like now. Well, wait, not now because you're watching me. But right after, go get it. OK, and download, go to the source forge, download these two files in here for your weights. And you want to make sure that AR mask is checked. And so what I would do is I would drag this over, drop it on the image. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull out all of my stars and save them on a star mask. And I would have a starless image to really be more aggressive with my um, with my color manipulation. Uh, but even though I've connected StarNet to my GPU, it still takes a while. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to minimize this image. I'm going to push it over here because I already have it done. So here's the star mask that it pulled out. Cool. And then here is my starless image. And I don't know about you guys, but it's funny how we go outside. We want to see stars. We want to see stars to guide on. We want to make sure our HFRs are good. We're all about the stars. And then we get in here to process and we want to get rid of the stars. <laughs> but this is really cool. I mean, the amount of dark nebula that's in this structure here and this, the stuff that you can see, there's times where I just process this and I don't ever put the stars back in. Sorry, stars. Um, but now that I have this starless image here, I can really start attacking these colors. And I don't use a process for that. I use a script. So let's come in here to script. Let me zoom in. So I'm going to come down to utilities. I'm going to come over here to color mask. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. All right. So all of this is default. You see the target image is star, starless clone, something that I named earlier. And I'm going for a chrominance mask. I'm using my strength at 100%. 
And the first mass that I want to create is cyan because that's going to be where a lot of my oxygen is. All right. So click cyan. And because it's going to let me move this over, because it's really going to focus in on this and this doesn't have a lot of structure. You know, we have we were having a ethical discussion earlier. You know, honestly, we are all bound by structure. We can't change that with these images, but we but color is very personal. Um, and you notice that, man, you, you see somebody process that and you'll see it so many different ways. Uh, I'm just so I'm not trying to quarter you into saying this is exactly how you got to do it. I'm showing you what tools to use to get it to put a smile on your face. God, that sounded corny. Anyway, so we're going to hit cyan. We're going to blur that because it's this data in here that doesn't have a lot of structure. We're going to blur it to four. And if uh, you're having trouble seeing it, it's right down here. It says mass blur. We're going to blur that to four and we're going to click OK. And it's worth seeing. So here's our cyan mask. OK, and, it, and we know it's cyan. Why? Because it's got a C. I used to rename them because I was like, how do you tell them? But then all of a sudden I realized they were putting little letters there. So now it's the cyan mask. So let's put it, let's put it right down here. Uh, so we're going to create uh, another mask. Go back in here to scripts and utilities, color mask. And we want to do green, right? Because we want to get rid of the green. We want to change that to the yellow gold. So green, let's blur it to a three. Pop in pretty quick. I mean, that's almost like an image, right? You can definitely see the difference in the masks that are being created. Give me a little satellite trail through that green one too. So let's minimize it. I'm gonna put these right here so I can see them better. Move you up here. So cyan green. Now this is a very important mask. It's the last one that I create when I'm doing SHO images. Come back in here to script, utilities. Color mask is yellow. Or oh, you got yellow right here. We're going to blur it to a three. Look, OK. Uh, this is really cool. So, right? So this is some serious highlights. I mean, these little ghostly tendril floaty thingies. I don't know. Uh, they're really highlighted in this yellow. It's a very important mask. So let's minimize it and push that over there. So now we got an image. We want to take these masks, we want to put it on an image, and we want to manipulate it. And the uh, tool that we're going to use is going to be our curves transformation tool. So let's open it up. Let's push it right here. Let me bring my little mask down. Housekeeping. Got to do housekeeping. Let's do that. Let's reset the tool. And so if you've been in GitHub or, or you know, a processing program like this, this is going to start to feel familiar because it's curves. It's basically what it is. So let's take our cyan mask, let's open it up, and we're going to put that cyan mask on this image. Another non-intuitive thing. You see this little tab right here? If we drag it off, we just made a clone. It's easy, right? But we can also drag it off, and we can put it right up underneath here, right on that tab, and you see our image just turn red. By default, our color is vulnerable and our background is protected. See, it's more red than right here. But I don't want to see that. So I'm going to right click on the image. I'm going to go down here to mask, Let me zoom in. And I'm going to come down here to show mask and click that. So we know that our mask is still applied. Why? Because our tab here, our name tag, is this brownish, reddish, burnt sienna, whatever color that color. So the mask is applied. So we're focusing on the oxygen. We want to get this from aqua to a bluish color. And so let's work on that. Let's come in here to blue and we're going to lift that blue. See it start to, oh, but guess what? You can't see anything happening, can you? Why? Because all these tools have this, this little tool right down here called a real-time preview. So we want to click that. So now if I come in here and I select like RGB, you see now it's really jacking with the image, right? I can always reset it. 
So this real-time preview shows what you're doing here in real time. So let's come here to the blue. Let's lift it up. I want to kill off some of the green. I want to pull down a little bit of the red. I want to brighten it just a little bit by creating a little S-curve, a little mini S-curve right in here with the RGB. Okay. And this little B component, this thing's badass. So I can take that B component and I can pull it down. And man, it just, the blue goes crazy, right? So I can apply this stretch to the image. Let's click apply. What? That is not what we did. Wait. Okay. So another thing about PixInsight is this preview is reading this stretch and what's actually been done to the image. So if we reset the tool, reset button, click reset, then we notice now they're identical. That scared me to death the first time. I was like, what in the heck? All right. So I'm gonna show you something really powerful here with that cyan mask. I'm gonna close the real-time preview. I'm gonna right click on the image and come down here to mask and I'm gonna say invert mask. So the background and everything around it other than this blue is now vulnerable, right? I'm gonna open up a real-time preview. And I'm gonna click it to the image here. Actually, I'm gonna hit RGB and then click into the image. And you can see what's populating up here is our R are red, green, and blue levels along this linear line here, right here in the background space. And you know, we're pretty good. We're, we're really close to each other. So you can see, if I move over here, you can see that start to creep up. So remember before I talked about depth and you wanna bring that nebula forward and kind of push the background back. One way to create depth. So what I wanna do, with RGB selected, I'm going to come right here because if you look where these uh, our levels are in our background, they're right here in this little quadrant. So I want to anchor this line. I'm going to put a click point here. Come right here, put another click point. I'm going to come right here, right in the middle, and I'm just going to pull it down. Boom, just like that. I'm going to click apply, apply, not apply, and reset. And I'm going to close the or close the real time preview. So the next mask that I want to choose is my green mask. Let's work on some green. So you don't have to take this mask off. You can just swap them out by dragging and dropping. We're going to minimize the mask, create a real-time preview. And so now we want to really focus in on this, the hydrogen and sulfur areas that are really strong right in here. We want to get those to be more of a yellow gold, according to NASA, I guess. We're gonna push that red up like that. We're gonna pull down some green. And you really want that to get the, just try to pull all that blue out right about there. You ain't gonna get crazy. So let's brighten it up just like we did before. Let's create a little less curve, all right? Something like that. And then the C component over here, if we click it and we push it up, it's gonna really saturate those yellows and reds. Something like that. Let's click apply. Pretty quick. Wow. It's on fire. So let's reset the tool. Close the real-time preview. Let's open up our yellow mask. This is our really cool mask. Let's apply it. And open up a real-time preview. Let's just brighten that. Right about there. And then we're just going to add some red. Right about like that. We we'll probably push our C component up just a little bit. And we'll click apply. So let's reset the tool. Let's close uh, our real time preview. So dig it, man. Uh, oh, and by the way, moving around here in your images, if you hold the space bar and then click around, it's like the little drag hand. So look, I don't know what that little guy is right there. I wish somebody could tell me because he's cool. But we got some pretty good colors. We, we've really got some good dark nebula in here that's showing up. we got some great detail. And we can probably, let's apply that cyan mask one more time. And I would probably run back through this two or three times. 
Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to, we're actually going to come in here to the B component and just pull it down just a little bit, add just a little bit of blue. Click apply. All right. So let's minimize the tool. Let's right click on the image, come down here to mask. I always forget to zoom in mask, and then we're going to remove the mask and zoom back out. All right, so we got a great looking image and we need to put the stars back in, all right? Um, so I guess I gotta ask, is there any questions so far? Kind of zipping along here. Uh, there was one question, uh, Sean asked, do you pull a loom before or after you process the image in color mask? We're gonna, that's a great question. And actually, let me look here. I do not pull illuminance. Why? Because I'm going to get to the point where this HA is my luminance. So that's why I double down on this HA. This is about 16 hours of HA compared to six hours each of the oxygen and the sulfur. So we're going to use this luminance or this HA as our luminance here in just a second. But no, I do not pull that luminance first. This is all. Uh, no, I do not. <laughs> It's often that people don't use luminances when they're when they're doing um, uh, narrow band imaging. Luminances are used more in the RGB field. And that's a great point. And I'm going to show you here coming up when I put these stars back in, I'm going to show you um, what led me to do this particular process. So uh, any other questions or? Yeah, there was a question. I'm looking for it yeah. now. Um, um, well, our suburban astronomer says that that little point that you highlighted was a, a Bach globule. It's cool. It looks like a little fish. <laughs> it's probably twice the size of our solar system, but it looks uh, a little funny. You found them in these uh, emission nebula. Yeah. Um, I found a, I found my question drive from John at Astra. Um, yeah. You didn't use a linear fit on the channels. No, I do not. No. Yeah. What if you, what if you, why have you gone that route instead of, because uh, many people do recommend you linear fit the channels. Uh, I just, to me, after a uh, background extraction, I tend to see that the background is acceptable. And, and, and that's the other thing about tonight and, and going through this process. I talk to so many people who go, I don't want to spend six hours or all day working on an image. So I guess the sort of preface is that there are a lot of things that you can do to enhance this data. I guess what I'm trying to go through tonight is, is just really quick ways. I'm sure you're going to see this and you're going, man, he should have done this and that. Um, this is something that I've worked on enough that within an hour, I can go from grayscale to an image you're ready to JPEG and share. So does that make sense? Yeah, let me just add that there's a lot of ways to get to the same endpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, it's, you, could, you could stretch the individual SHO files after you take the stars out, but you're doing it through curves and yep. math, which is fundamentally the same thing. Correct. And as, as Molly pointed out, the fact that you use the um, linking and unlinking uh, basically says stretch them according to what they actually need rather than um, the overall picture, which right. is kind of linear fitting them in a sense. Um, yep. So now uh, we've got more definition on perhaps what pulling illuminance means. And that is after you have, I think what Sean Maloney is trying to explain is um, after you've got the image that you want, you pull the luminance um, channel out and then work on the luminance to do some sharpening and smoothing and detailing and stuff like that, and then use it again back to the, and then you put it back into the image. Yes. I don't know. Yeah, some people do that, I know too. Well, that's what I'm gonna show the HAS for. It's okay. gonna blow you away. Okay. Get your popcorn. <laughs> okay, so. We've got this image to this point now. And, and like you said, I could spend a whole bunch more time on color. Uh, but for the sake of time, I'm going to leave it right here. And I want to put the stars back in. So these stars need to go back into the image. 
All right. And the tool that we use for that is pixel math. And pixel math can look very scary. It is, there are some daunting equations out there for mixing data uh, that I'm learning more and more about. But I'm using pixel math and it's an extreme basic form here. I'm using a, uh, we're gonna zoom in here. I'm using a single expression, okay? And I'm gonna open up the expression editor. And I've written just a really simple formula here. It is basically the image plus the star mask. So let's back it back out because I was working on it before. We wanna do this star starless clone uh, right here. Now, the reason that I have this particular portion in here in parentheses is, is I'm, I like star reduction. I think it's very crucial in order to, you know, especially some of these, uh, these uh, targets that we shoot, there's so much stars, you can't even really see the nebula. So this is where I start some of the star reduction. So basically what I'm saying is the image that we just processed plus roughly 80% of the star intensity of the star mask is basically what that is. Uh, so I'm gonna click okay to that. Now in this destination tab, let's drop that down. I want to replace the target image. Make sure that's checked. I don't want to create, create another image because then I've just got two images to deal with. So I want to replace the target image, okay? And so if I just take this instance and drag it over and drop it onto the image, bam, stars back in, just like that. Uh, and see, our stars are still the same. They are uh, they're not overblown because trust me, when I first started doing this and the stars were in, I would get these horrible halos and I'd have to like go backwards and try to tone some stuff down. But now we're moving them. You know, I've got uh, pretty good star shapes, right? 